morning everyone time for world cup routine review groups e to h let's start at group e with probably the hardest team to review that's brazil uh and why is it hard because i think that brazil got better and better and better and yeah they were eliminated by a belgian team that just had their number but it was a very even game it was not a game where uh, brazil exited in disgrace like we'll talk about other teams this was just a hard fought match and it turned out in belgium's favor uh, if brazil would have gotten the penalty um, i'm sure brazil would be at least have advanced to the semi-finals Okay, having said that, I also think that what we will remember of this Brazil squad is not the very solid play for at least two, if not three games. But what we'll remember is uh, the crybaby Neymar. Neymar, I the more I think about it, Neymar cost his team with his antics, with his continuous rolling and rolling and whining and complaining uh, to such a degree that that was probably a reason why he why they didn't get the penalty against Belgium because Neymar has been in the referee's head the entire to no, my uh, on the referee's case I should say the entire tournament uh, he started out the tournament with uh, the most ridiculous haircut that we've seen since uh, the great Ronaldo just decided to leave a patch on the front for his World Cup victory um, yeah, speaking of stupid, but mostly because he was complaining how he gets it. Yes, he gets fouled a lot, but be a man about it. Don't be a boy. Don't cry so much. You're a crybaby. It's really, really, really. And then all these faking injuries, uh, uh, falling down. I mean, I was so happy when uh, his little tumble that he took against Costa Rica was uh, where he actually got the penalty that this was taken away from him. Blatant acting. And not even good acting. Absolutely blatant bad acting. And not only causes a lot of uh, media attention and a lot of negative vibes towards the Brazil team, but I think it also costs Brazil then in the end because they didn't get the calls anymore because they know they are acting and I think a good case can be made that without Neymar on his best he can make the difference but I think this Brazil squad would have uh, would have performed probably even better without Neymar in his state if there was Neymar the team player Neymar the non-actor Neymar just being another player uh, I think this Brazil squad would have been perceived better and probably a lot more people would be crying about this Brazil squad. Um, as I said, I think they made their best performance against Belgium. Uh, they were missing Casemiro. They were absolutely lethal against Mexico. Uh, this was a strong performance. I mean, this Mexico team, yes, it had a downer against Sweden, but uh, this Mexican team usually also grows with the task. So that was kind of amazing what they did there also against Ser Serbia I mean Serbia never really had stood to the chance uh, the first two games yeah against Switzerland they fell off in the second half when Switzerland got the equalizer and then uh, there was not much coming from Brazil and except acting and yeah against Costa Rica they got the two late goals as it often happens I mean it was an honestly it was a personal battle uh, Brazil as uh, attack against Kayla Navas so having said all that and this will be contentious I want to give Brazil a B grade at this World Cup they I know it will be perceived as a failure but I think what they showed overall take Neymar out this was a really solid and a strong team that was definitely among the best three of this World Cup if the bracket would have gone differently I think Brazil would have finished in the top three if not one at all they were that good so yeah i give brazil a b and i don't feel even bad about this 
Now Switzerland. <laughs> Switzerland also made a classic Swiss story. Um, the draw against Brazil, however luck, luck it was, but this was a huge result. This put a lot of pressure on Serbia and helped them in their game. And this is what I think the, uh, made the game Switzerland-Serbia uh, a really exciting game. However, also in that game, Switzerland showed... Yeah, not Switzerland. The Kosovo Albanians within the Swiss squad kind of pissed me off. I have to say it that way. Uh, I understand that this was a high stakes game for them. Serbia and Albania are not getting along and there's a lot of ill will uh, between them. I mean, uh, Shakiri's parents were uh, tortured even by the Serbians and so on. So I get it, but keep the pol use this outside of the field or whatever. Keep the politics outside. Don't make this stupid uh, gesture in an already tense atmosphere. Uh, and don't undress yourself. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm fine if take your shirt off. I don't even mind that. But then pulling your pants down is just so low class. Um, that was the one thing that bugged me about uh, this Swiss team. They are. Other than that, I think they are of the second tier Euro European teams. They should be considered as one, one of, if not the best. They get consistent results. They have a very solid squad. And uh, thanks to Shakiri and Co, uh, all the immigrants, they have a really uh, good technical base as well. For some reason, Switzerland always manages to prepare great for the first couple of games and then it kind of falls off. Um, the draw against Costa Rica was already a little bit of a downer and then their no-show against Sweden. Yeah, having this victory against Serbia seemed like the World Cup final to a good portion of the Swiss squad. And from then it seemed to be all cruising and yeah, Sweden was the poison that they that really killed off the Swiss I think there was the concentration was lacking so it was a steadily downward curve for Switzerland at this World Cup you started out great with two games uh, that mattered to you and then the other ones you fell into the, the, the trap that we are now the favorites and that's where Switzerland usually fails so um, in the end those first two results are clearly overshadowed by subsequent failures. This Swiss team has the quality of making the quarterfinal. And therefore I actually want to give them a C- as the, the, the great, and I'm not even taking politics into account here. This was just, uh, it was similar to Neymar, uh, totally, completely unnecessary. Be above those things as much as you can be. Uh, yeah. I know it's not my, I don't have this experience that uh, these players had, at least their parents had, but you know how you can show Serbia uh, some, that, you're, that you're superior by scoring goals and kicking them out and not giving a damn uh, about them show them that you don't care about them. Don't make uh, such stupid gestures uh, that fan the flame. Um, also, those players have nothing to do with whatever happened. So that in addition, uh, it's just misguided. The other two teams, yeah, Serbia started out well, lost a tight one against Switzerland. Uh, that game was kind of always the turning point um, and never had, had a chance against Brazil. I think there is a lot of promise in this Serbian squad uh, but I think they could have done, uh, they did what they had to do, what they could do and they lost unluckily to, uh, to Switzerland. So I think C is an appropriate grade. I mean they didn't make a huge dent into the, in the tournament overall so yeah. I think C and Costa Rica, 
were just outclassed. It was a little bit disappointing to see how little they actually showed, given uh, their great goalkeeper. It's a little bit crazy here. They had a, a goalkeeper, Navas showed why he's the Real Madrid goalkeeper, as simple as that. But the rest of the squad clearly fell off, uh, was not was not as good as, uh, as the rest of the squad. So yeah, that was, I want to give Costa Rica a D, they should have, they showed much more. They can do much more, but you know, overall, maybe, maybe give them also a, a C minus as for Switzerland. That leads us to Group F. Uh, probably the one with the most surprising result. Uh, in Group F, we had, of course, winners Sweden, uh, who did way more than anyone expected of them. But everyone should not be so surprised. This was a Sweden squad that defeated, although on a big goalkeeping mistake, defeated the current world champions for us in qualifying. They eliminated the Netherlands, also beating them. They uh, got rid of Italy in the playoffs and they almost had Germany beat as well. So this Sweden squad Yes, they are not the great talents, but there is a lot of uh, hard effort put in, hard work, lots of organization. This Sweden squad uh, was always, I think, underestimated from the beginning. The win against Korea was, yeah, typically first uh, first round of play game where Sweden got a penalty, but Korea. As much as they tried to go forward, their goal threat, goal scoring threat was never there. So yeah, Sweden got a deserved victory there. Then against Germany, I uh, should have gotten a penalty, probably should have been up to nothing at half by halftime. Germany was dominant, Sweden, I think there was a point in the game where Germany had 20 passes and Sweden had six or something like that. Uh, but once Sweden showed their, their dangerous on the counter, counter attack, they seem deadly and the referee kind of blew that one a little bit because they should have gotten an early penalty they scored the goal uh, they had Germany right where they wanted them and yeah they, they then fell back I put a little bit down that Germany that was the 45 minutes where Germany really really showed what they're made of and they got the late winner uh, but yeah a draw for Sweden was, would have been a deserved result and then they used the same counter attacking strategy against uh, Mexico to get three goals against this Mexican squad that was uh, clearly afraid of uh, winning it you know oh we could finally achieve something against Switzerland Sweden was all along the better team and then yeah I think at the point when they played England, they had achieved already so much and this squad was built. I always have to think this was a squad built for four games and not for five games. Uh, they got tired, they didn't show much, although they could have gotten an equalizer. Uh, they had their chances, but you know, I think this was the one game where, in, uh, where they were clearly not outclassed, but you know, England did to them what they had done to many others just being efficient but overall you have to give Sweden an A for what they achieved I think uh, there was not much more in this squad uh, Mexico started out sensational I mean what they did to Germany uh, that is something that Germany hasn't seen for a long time they were really got everything right and they had great fans in the back except for the homophobic chants I understand where it's coming from, but it's, uh, they also should understand that yeah, it's time to move on and not be stuck in your old habits. It's not funny anymore at this time. Um, against South Korea, they also showed that they're a good squad, got the win. 
and at that point everything looked made for Mexico. <laughs> no, they lost big against Sweden and then you have to have Brazil. Get your act together, get a result against Sweden, but I think this Mexican squad cannot just get a result. They are this either very high, very low team. And yeah, against Brazil, it's exactly the type of opponent that they usually match well up against. Uh, you know, big opponent, this is usually in favor of um, Mexico, especially Brazil with all the history, but yeah, it fell apart. Uh, they didn't stand a chance. They had maybe 15 minutes of glory and then Brazil took over and there was no looking back. For that, I want to give Mexico a C. Early promise and then it fell off. Korea, without any goal scorer you have, you stand no chance. So I think Korea should uh, take out the big win against Germany. So for that, probably C plus B minus somewhere there. And Germany is just an F. I talked about it um, down. This squad was not a team. Yogi Löw couldn't find the balance. He changed way too often. Um, they played well for 45 minutes against Sweden when you thought, oh, now they're getting it together. No, it was not to be. Uh, their showing against South Korea was abysmal. Uh, this is not Germany standards. You just can give an F and better not talk about it. Group G, wearing Belgium, who won it all. Uh, and this was always an interesting group to begin with because uh, similar to Group B, you had two strong teams and two teams that everyone considered also rents. And yeah, the two strong teams made it both all the way to the semi-final. Both started out well with Belgium being more consistent by beating both Panama and Tunisia by three goals. England yeah, had a very great first half against Tunisia and then struggled mightily once they got the undeserved equalizer. Should have gotten a penalty, but then they scored a late goal uh, and they got the win. Um, against Panama, England really showed everything that they have uh, in terms of their dead ball prowess also showed a little bit that they can play so yeah uh, 6-1 no England team has scored more than five ever before so they have that now on their resume and yeah um, Belgium showed really good play in the first two games I mean it was always clear that Belgium is the better team of the two uh, that in the final group game they were already qualified and it seemed advantageous to be in second place rather than first place is one of those things where FIFA probably has to rethink a little bit um, you know having everything predetermined is probably not the best uh, way of dealing with things but yeah from then on let's stay with Belgium Belgium had a scare against Japan but got themselves out of it. A uh, tremendous showing against Brazil, where they just took advantage of Brazil's weaknesses on that day. Uh, against France, yeah, first half was even, then France was better, and then they finished off well against England again. So I think you cannot help but give Belgium an A. I really feel about that. They finally showed what they could do, maybe A minus because the semi-final was a little bit of a downer. Uh, as for England, I'm thinking similarly, they, once they were in the nicer uh, part of the bracket, they were struggling, as I said, against uh, Tunisia at the beginning. Uh, they had Colombia in the back. Uh, was a, would have been a deserved win in 90 minutes however then they uh, England cannot kill off games that's the big uh, that's the big downside of the game but they introduced with uh, dead balls free kicks corner kick variants uh, a new level of sophistication and yeah reaching a semi-final having the golden uh, boot winner that those are big achievements for a young, young, young English side.
I think I want to give them a B minus, Belgium A minus, uh, and B plus for B plus for England. Uh, Panama, I gotta give them a D. It is the their first showing, but they were one of those teams that you could say were not fit for this World Cup. Tunisia had both positive had both positive showings against both the big boys. Uh, overall, a C minus, I think. There is probably more there, but I think C minus overall uh, seems to be to me. I mean, they did as much as they could do and they got their lead. And then they leaves us with the uh, fun group H. This was the most interesting group. I already said that before. Let's run through teams. Colombia won this group, uh, and long time it didn't. For a long time it didn't look like that. Uh, because they lost the first game uh, after three minutes. They had then a still strong showing in the first half, but they were down by a goal, was where it happened, and then Japan just outclassed them. Uh, they got tired. They had a wonderful, fabulous showing against Poland, uh, where they really showed all the class. Against Senegal, uh, Yarimina scored another goal. I mean, he scored three goals. Uh, they also showed that uh, that they can be a strong team, that they are a strong team, and got a deserved victory, I think. And then I guess England they played the ugly, and that put the damper on me for Colombia. Uh, if they had Hamas or Rodriguez in the game, it would be different, I think. Uh, they would be a much more balanced squad. But for that reason, I'm giving uh, Colombia a B. B minus C plus, I think. Um, they were a little bit. They were the one ill disciplined team at this World Cup. Uh, they're an exciting team to watch. Uh, I would have loved to see more of that, but the way they played against England and also at times against Senegal and uh, at the beginning of Japan, yeah, C plus. They should have done more. Uh, second place team was Japan. I cannot help but give Japan an A. Um, great game plan against uh, Colombia. Of course, their early red card helped them. Uh, then against Senegal, this was an even game where the draw was deserved and both teams went for it. And then against Poland, I did not see much more from what I could gather. Poland got the deserved victory, but the uh, Japanese coach then saw that this is not their day and invited Poland to not play for more and counted that Colombia beats. So that was the one thousand. So maybe for that I give them A minus. What they did against Belgium was great, wonderful. So A minus for Japan. Uh, one of the big surprises of the World Cup. Uh, then we are already at Senegal. Uh, Senegal is one of those teams that should have done more, could have done more. Um, yeah, their first game against Poland, yeah, it was a lucky victory the way the game went, but I think they showed they were the better team, they were extremely physical uh, against Japan, similarly, and then you gotta get the result against Colombia. Uh, Colombia was the better team, but I think a draw was in there. They were showing too little for really being this great Africa team. It's similar to Nigeria in a way. Uh, you got what you could get, but in order to advance, you just got to give a little bit more. You were so, so close. I mean, one yellow card away. And yeah, discipline, discipline, discipline. So for that, maybe it was uh, fair. And Poland is another big disappointment. Uh, we expect more from this Polish squad, don't we, with the players that they have. And yeah, I even want to say, despite the last uh, victory they got, it's overall an F. Uh, F plus, D minus, better than Germany, let's put it that way. But yeah, let's. Nah, I still want to. I I still want to give them an F. We expect more from this uh, team. Uh, it was unlucky against Senegal, but you gotta impose yourself a little bit more. Uh, it was almost a no-show against Colombia, and then you won, as you always do when you're already eliminated. Poland, the World Cup, is a sad story. Well, there you have it. I went through all 32 teams, and I think I'm done reviewing everything. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. 
I had fun doing this and yeah, give me a thumbs up if you liked that. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of those opinion pieces and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.